Hey, I'm Mark Rhodes and welcome back to my workshop. In my last video, you saw me use silicon molds and resin casting in order to make 13 John Wick markers. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about the things I learned from making those markers. Oh, and I'm going to be announcing the winner of the 13 markers that I'll be giving away. Keep watching. So firstly, if you haven't watched the first video, I'd strongly suggest you go and watch it because otherwise none of this is going to make sense. Making the molds and casting the markers in the first video gave me a tremendous learning opportunity. I must have made over 50 castings of the markers and several different molds, and I think I learned from every single one I made. So with that in mind, I'd like to tell you about the nine things that I learned from doing this project. Let's just dive straight into it. Tip number one is get yourself a vacuum chamber. This was by far my biggest learning and the quality of both my molds and my resin pores dramatically improved after I started using one of these. I bought this off eBay, which turned up in about two days and seriously took my quality to another level. This vacuum chamber removes all the bubbles from the resin or silicon. And trust me, there are a lot more than you think there would be. Tip number two is don't bother with graphite cold casting. This is one of the markers that I did with graphite cold casting. I wanted to try dusting graphite powder into the mold to see if I could cold cast from it, like a powder. To my surprise, it didn't work. It gave a dull, flat and uninteresting finish that I just wouldn't bother with again. In fact, this really surprised me because I've seen a lot of 3D prints being rubbed with graphite. So my assumption was that if I cast it into the mold and gave it a good polish, it would look fantastic. In reality, it sucks. Don't bother with it. Tip number three is always use a paint when you're trying to rub a graphite finish. I tried a lot of different graphite rubs and each of them worked to various degrees. I tried it without paint, I tried it with a white paint, and I tried it with a black paint. In my opinion, graphite rubbing works best over paint as the graphite can bite into the paint during the rub. And it also gives you a level of control over the color of the metal when you're finished. Black metal like this one here gives you an iron-like look, whereas white paint gives an aluminum or a silvery kind of look. Tip number four, rub and buff is only good on contrasting details. Rub and buff is super popular because it's an easy to use finish that gives metallic results. But you know what? On objects of minimal detail, it kind of sucks. This marker is kind of interesting because it has details as well as large flat sections with no details. Rub and buff is great when rubbed over the details like the front cover of the markers, but frankly, it's a really hard thing to get a consistent coat on the finished surfaces. Tip number five, Always tint your resin when cold casting. One of the most disappointing markers I made was when I didn't bother to tint my resin black prior to cold casting. As a result, the creamy white finish shot through the finish. If I was doing this again, I'd always use a thicker coat of metallic powder, but I'd always tint my resin. This one here is the one that wasn't tinted, and this one here is the one that was tinted. The process is exactly the same, except that this one doesn't have any tinting in the resin. Tip number six is always use some kind of powder in the mold. Using a powder when brushed into the mold seems to help the resin flow inside the mold without leaving air bubbles behind. Even though I degassed my resin, it still made a huge difference. And I noticed this after every single one of my cold casts work, but the pure resin casts were failing with little bubbles like this one. You can see straight through it. If you want to cast with pure resin and not cold cast, the answer is to brush cornstarch into the mold. It worked perfectly for me. My guess here is that brushing the powder in helps break the surface tension on the resin and allows it to flow into those cracks instead of getting caught up on little details. Tip number seven is brush in your undercuts and rotate during filling. I had a heap of casts that worked perfectly except for one tiny little air bubble stuck in say the hinge portion of the marker or at the bottom of the marker. This is just an air bubble. So to counter this, what I found was dripping a few drops of the resin onto the hinge pieces while I was degassing the rest of the resin. And this allowed me to use a toothpick to just push the bubbles out manually during pouring. That made a huge difference. Tip number eight, plan your pouring spouts. This part here is a pouring spout and that's how you get your resin into the mold. You're going to need a pouring spout and a vent. That'll allow the air to get out. On bigger molds such as the marker, that's not a big deal as your pouring gates tend to be quite big. But on smaller ones such as my marker cap, it's a lot harder. I had to dribble the resin in slowly because I couldn't make the gate much bigger than I already had without damaging the finished product. If I'd spent a little bit more time planning that out, I think I would have had better results that would have been simpler, easier and faster. That brings us to tip number nine. 
rub and buff can hide your crimes. If you're going to cold cast, then when you trim or sand your pouring spouts and flashing off, you might end up with a section of the cast where you have no powdered material on the outside, which completely ruins the effect. That's where rub and buff actually shines. Forgive the pun. Just rub a tiny bit of it of a similar tint around the edge where you notice there's no uh, metal and you'll notice that it just disappears and blends straight into the outside. It's a fantastic way to hide the sins that you've done during your build. So those are my learnings. While I learned a lot, you know what? I'm incredibly happy with the outcomes. All of the failures that I had gave me a great opportunity to learn what worked and what didn't work. And next time I go to cast something, I'll be in a great position to get it to work. I'll also know ahead of time what finish is going to work best for me because I got to compare them side by side. But more importantly than any of that, I had a heap of fun just pouring the molds and making the casts. That brings us to the giveaway bit. As mentioned in my previous video, I'm giving away all of these markers. So who are the winners? Well, right now your names should be flashing up on the screen. If you are one of those winners, reach out to me via social media or email me at markroads at gmail.com with your postage details and I'll get your marker in the mail as soon as possible. That's the end of the video. I hope this information helps you with your casting and I'll certainly be doing more of it myself so I'm glad I invested the time to learn. Now if you have any suggestions on molding or casting or there's something you'd like to see me build in the future, drop me a comment down below. As always, if you enjoyed what I'm doing here, hit the like and subscribe button so you'll get to see more of my builds. If you're especially keen to see my next build then make sure you ring the notification bell so you'll see my videos as soon as I finish them. Thank you for watching, see you in the next video.